So it's a Thursday, 23rd. Yesterday was a really hot day. Let's see them. Yesterday was a really hot day. Today is quite warm as well. The wind has picked up, and we already heard on the scanners last night that there were some fires that have um, flared up up in the valleys towards Katoomba and uh, out near Lithgow. This, this is a northwesterly, so it's going to it's coming in hot. And so we've been listening to the scanner and we can hear brigades running around in different places and stuff. So it's, um, I'm going to continue working on getting some of the timber out from under that cover into the trailer so I can take it back down to work. And um, we've also got an air, an air contact coming to have a look at the... Um, sorry. I just had a notification come up about fire dangers. Um, yeah, we've got an air con tech coming out to have a look at our downstairs air con because it's been playing up and it's only new. So it's a warranty check come out. They're coming out this afternoon, so I'm going to see what I can get done before then. I won't be able to, I don't think I'd be able to get a run down to the school before they arrive though. So, into some work. You'll see that branch just there, that just dropped from up there. My wife was pointing that out to me the other day, saying that looks like that might drop from the wind, and it just did. I guess I am thankful for their bamboo, because otherwise that would have landed on my shed. And when I made a comment to them just saying we were afraid of that, they were so blase about it, well that's why people that's what you expect when you live in the Blue Mountains. But that's the tree we've been asking them to take care of. Now you have a look at that. That sky has become basically brown again. Can't tell that much that way, but it's just brown. It's only when you come around this way. You can kind of see the sun behind it and a bit of the sky. There's no fires super close to us. My wife said she's been hearing it all over the scanner. It's still blowing from the northwest. And. Yeah. That's why I'm still working on this area over here. I'll show you how I'm going. These were the last two pallets that were in this stack just under behind this iron. So that's where I had that stack of pallets that actually came up to just below this roof. That's the paving that I had underneath to keep them off the ground. There's a couple that have sort of embedded in the ground I've got to get out. This pile. I've still got to pull some of the stuff out from in here. This pile here is construction grade timber and the skirting boards we've got 
and some of the leftover decking. I need to get the stuff out from down low, which is really only these few pieces, so I'm going to see if I can get them into the trailer and go from there. So they went wrong about a change in the weather. That's um, between to 8 at night here. It's currently 37 degrees Celsius down at the school. Um, I've just, just closed down the roller door on the shed. We've got some of the stuff organised over there. Some of that's like treated pine sleepers and then I've got some um, Oregon which actually came from the school gym and I'd taken it home thinking I could make a table out of it or something like that. But that's there. I've got some hardwood pieces over there. There were old pallet slap things at the bottom. That's definitely going to need some organising. All of that. I've kind of got a little bit organised for the top. We've got the... This is Nick Ash or Tassie Oak, which used to be windows along the top of the building there when they used to have louver windows and they were just throwing that stuff out and it's nice big solid pieces. So I managed to salvage some of it. Um, that's just some construction pine there. But there's a whole mix of stuff in amongst here including some of the old gym floor stuff. <laughs> There's all this stuff here which still needs to be organised. The rack isn't too bad. If I try and look down here, I've got some of the Oregon, um, some of the hardwood pieces up here. These are some of the really big pieces I bought here. Some pine lining boards. They came off the back of the cabinet that I restored, or redid. Um, some of the hardwood stuff that was left over from when I was doing my stairs at the house and my fence and my gate. So all of that stuff there is actually all the old hardwood um, floorboards from both of my decks, like the upper and lower deck of the house. I've got some ideas for some of those offcuts, like cutting boards or something like that, something different that I haven't done for ages. But there's definitely one thought I'm thinking of having like this space is kind of wasted. I mean, I've got saw horses there, which we use when we have, um, you know, spraying the tim senior timber jobs. We set up the saw horses down at the trade school. But I'm thinking of doing a shallow rack that's only as far as the door, it comes all the way along here, even if it stops here rather than going all the way to that door. Shallow rack that I can actually stack some of this stuff. All of the shorter pieces of hardwood because I've, I know I've, I've got to come up with a, a job that we can use these short pieces. They're like eight inches long at the most, so a jewellery box or something like that. But if I can come up with something like that, I've got loads of it because there's all those boxes of it there as well. But that'd be the best place to store that because it's all short and if you had it stacked it'd be better than just lying around in these boxes. And all of the extra, <laughs> the over order of potting mix that we bought for doing the pots up in the um, in the cafe last year. But we can use those down at our ag plot area. Anyway, I've got to go get those. I've got five pallets in the back of the trailer. I'm gonna take those down the construction space and then head off, it's hot here. Kind of weird being at school this late, especially when it's not a work night function type thing. But our local community, they hire the gym out quite often after schools and obviously throughout the holidays as well for um, basketball clubs. And they were there. And so when I got here, gate was already open and then the gates down into the school where the gym was and everything that was open and the whole time I was there there was cars just coming and going and so when I left and it's eight o'clock I didn't have to lock up anything apart from the shed but I didn't have to stop and lock up the gates because they were still there I don't know what time they go through till but I think it's kind of nice that um, school resources can be used by communities and I know our, our local communities use the gym and the hall 
quite a bit. It's hotter here, just down the street, than it was over at the school. 40 degrees, and it's eight o'clock at night. Is it any wonder that there's all these bushfires that have started up again? That wind just whipped up. I'm actually not absolutely certain whether all of what's in the sky at the moment is smoke, because the way that wind whipped up, there's quite a good chance that it could have been um, a dust storm again mixed in with the smoke because there's been quite a few dust storms out west and that was a really strong northwesterly wind that came through and went past all of the bushfires and that sort of thing so there could have been quite a bit of dust whipped up in that it's not so windy now and it's hanging around so I'm not really sure. Did a run to the metal recyclers yesterday to get rid of some of that stuff that was in the yard. Had a giant aluminium awning that used to be across the front of the house years ago and I've just had it lying up against the back of the house. That plus some um, extruded aluminium they had from old windows and things like that. That all plus the steel came to 16 bucks so that wasn't bad and it got it out of the yard. And now I'm heading down into, almost into the city, down to a store called USA Foods. So there's one in Sydney, there's one in Melbourne. I think that's the only two stores they have in Australia. And they stock brands that you can only really find in the USA. And so there's a few things that we get every now and then. Keep the reminder of home for my wife and for me it's things I sort of got used to a little bit while we were over there. They had a setup where you can um, go online, do your order, pay for it and call it click and collect and so when it arrives in the store they give you an email and so I'm driving down there now to collect it. After that I'm going to go across and um, I've organised a test drive of a new to me car and um, I really just want to try and get the feel for what this car's like to you. See what the actual seating's like, what the interior's like, feel what it's like to drive before making any firm decisions. This car is still running, the van is not, and I've got to cancel my insurance and everything on that. I keep forgetting. I feel like even though this car has been running well, it's just over 409,000 Ks, it's started to just have a few too many things wrong. The brakes, hubs, drive shafts at the front, now the suspension. There was one thing I forgot the other day, the radiator went last year. The sense I'm getting with the oil leak is that the only real way to fix that oil leak is to do a complete engine rebuild. I kind of feel like um, that might not be worth it. still think I'll find out what that sort of thing costs, but I've got a feeling it's going to be too much to spend on a car this old, even though the car is still going. There's, there's no rust in it, the body's still good, it still drives well. You get a sense that I've got a little bit of an attachment Continue to this car. On Juno Parade for one kilometre. I bought it brand new and I've had it since 2003. A little bit of an attachment to it, but it's just a car. What they call the blue book, I guess, in the States, or the red book price, or whatever it's called. The value of this on, on that site in Australia, it's only between three and four grand. I already spent over a thousand to get the front hubs and everything replaced. The suspension will be another twelve to fourteen hundred depending on where I go. And this engine rebuild could be even even just to replace the oil seals top and bottom, they say could come to over a thousand dollars. So there you go, just the suspension and fixing that oil leak is gonna cost me almost two and a half grand and the car's only valued at about three and I've already spent several grand recently. Cheaper than a brand new car. So the suburb I come down into is called Belmore and that's where this store is. USA Foods has a tiny underground car park. It's not very many spots but the store's not very large either. Walking out of the driveway and heading up to the front of the store. USA food shop when you do that click and collect it makes it a lot easier and I was just able to get the couple of things that 
weren't online, but they did have them here. It's like our, our coffee, and I saw Apple Jacks on the shelf, so I bought some Apple Jacks. Um, price is pretty steep. Uh, like a family size, this is going to make a lot of people like freak out. Um, the family size Apple Jacks is uh, 20 21 dollars. Um, and it's like I said, it's something that we'll get once in a while. And I think, don't think I've even got those every time I come down. The coffee, 19 dollars for a 12 ounce, that's kind of comparable to the larger coffee. Like if you were to get something like Makona, the Makona coffees in the big glass jars, that stuff's expensive and that's what I used to buy all the time. I now use my coffee machine and use the, the Kirkland coffee from Costco. I use that and that's a decent price, 15 bucks for a giant tin. There's our little shopping bags. They've got their own USA food bags and if you bring your own bags, you get 5% off your order. I don't think that worked on the click and click because that was had to pay on online but because I walked in with them I got five percent off the other stuff that I bought it's horrible when you drive down here and you go oh, the bags are in the house <laughs> I grabbed them first up anyway I'm gonna head off from here and go have a look at this car Sunday Australia Day or Invasion Day depending on which way you look at it heading down to Lansvale to have another look or have a look and a couple more um, vehicles, same model that I was looking at yesterday. These are used ones. Dual cab utes is what I'm looking at. And one of these ones down here has a canopy. And I wanna see, I've never owned a dual cab ute. The one I drove yesterday is a test drive. Felt very comfortable and the visibility in it and everything seemed great. I was, I was surprised at the rear visibility out the back window. So I'm hoping to be able to take a test drive of this one that has a cab over the back of the tray. So I can, because I like the idea of having a cover over the a ute tray for security and for being able to put stuff in there. Because I don't want to, even if I just got a regular ute back, I would have to get a lockable cover on it or something like that. So this is one of those things like if I wanted to store stuff in it. So I want to see what this is like, see how that might affect the visibility. I mean, I'm, a, I'm kind of used to really poor visibility having had Max. Five metre long van with no side windows, just the solid backs. Kind of used to, to poor visibility type thing, so this should so, surely be a, an improvement on that. The one that's down here is a 2018 model with about 12,000 Ks. You're in a different position because the summer sun, it destroyed the suction mount of the my other phone holder. So I've got you on an older mount attached to the side window. One of the ones that I had on my, I was using car sales and doing favorites and that sort of stuff, keeping an eye on some. And one down near the airport that was really well priced, it sold yesterday. There was a really nice one that I looked at at Parramatta yesterday, but it was a, top top spec model with all these different features but the price was a little bit too high I think even with all the extras it's probably just a little too high for what I want to spend I'd still got to find out if I can get the finance for this too so that's why I'm, I'm looking at them and testing them out and my wife said this is what I've got to do I've got to try them out see if I actually like the feel or the look or that sort of stuff because that's how she found the car that she wanted that she got because she'd sit in different cars there was ones that she was researching 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 and thinking yeah this is the one I want as soon as she got in the driver's seat hated the driving position and didn't want to look at those cars anymore so we started looking at SUVs and I think that's because she got used to driving this and then she looked at a couple of models and went I really like that let's go and have a look at some and we'd missed we go and look at one and it had just sold. She'd ring up about one and it had just sold because of the deals. So she thought, well, maybe I can go get an next demo or a new one. And we went and looked at them. And when she got into it, the driving position of that and the, the feel of the seat didn't feel right to her. I wasn't too bad with it because it was similar to this, but there was, it was, to drive, it felt a little different than just sitting in. 
that was the thing. So we started looking at some other cars and through different models and all this sort of stuff until we finally came to the car that she liked and she got. So it's the same thing. I've done a lot of research on the type of vehicle I want and now I've got to really try them out. This place, I rang them this morning to check that they were open. They're only open till 2 being the public holiday. The place I went to yesterday isn't open today but apparently they're open tomorrow. So if there's nothing here then I might be able to ring them there again tomorrow. I still can't get onto the bank until at least Tuesday and Tuesday I'm back at work. I'm not in a super rush. Suzuki's still running, no wood, <laughs> but that suspension issue and the leaking engine, oil, they are concerns. And it wasn't until, like I, I think I already said, but I'll repeat it now. The leaking oil wasn't too much of a concern to me. It's smoking off a bit on the exhaust pipe, blah, blah, blah. But my wife did make a very valid point, and that was like, she said, you go doing a really long drive, engine gets really hot, it leaks a lot of oil because of the drive and the pressure. It seemed to be, it did seem to leak a bit more oil when I was towing, and I think because the engine was straining more, forcing more pressure of it with the oil. But she said, you do that, and it gets on the exhaust pipe, and it's cooking the oil and heating up. Your engine could catch fire, the car could catch fire. And I'd never really thought about that. It's a good thing I don't park over dry grass. That was a concern, and especially summer. With the heat we have here, like we're, we're getting rain, hot, rain, hot, rain, hot. The last couple of days have been really hot.